Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fenrir. Yes, it is not dead. It is coming back better than it was before, uh, hopefully. Um, it's actually been two months since I've put an update on Fenrir, and there's a lot of reasons for me slowing down, I guess, my my uh, upload speeds that I used to do. Um, obviously, I've just been really busy with, with uh, not Planet Coaster Life stuff. Um, hopefully that's not the biggest thing for all of my new subscribers. So as I did with the first episode of Fenrir celebrating 100 subscribers, we're going to celebrate my 400 subscriber mark today. Uh, well, I think it was like two days ago, but we're going to celebrate today with this video. And I want to thank you guys all so much for coming here. Um, most likely because Jaunty sent you here. And uh, if you did come here because Jaunty or Geekism, however you know him, sent you, um, then that's awesome. Welcome, and I hope you enjoyed this series as well as Cedarwood Valley. And uh, so, this park, if you didn't hear any of the background story, um, I suggest you watch the first video. I talk a lot about the Nordic mythology behind the name Fenrir, and it's kind of like after like a wolf sort of creature thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, this is why we're having it set. And I think we're going to have it set in like a, like a kind of little German town sort of thing. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of pathwork and a canal and a little bit of a lake uh, off in the distance there. And the reason for this was because I just really wanted to make this sort of style, right? I haven't made something like this before. This surely isn't going to be in Seawood Valley. And I think it would be a little bit more unique um, to put it in here. So the reason I really wanted to have it was because... Uh, when I was studying abroad, I went to Amsterdam, and I love the canals in Amsterdam. And recently, I was in San Antonio. And while they don't have canals in San Antonio, I guess you can call it a canal, um, they do have the San Antonio Riverwalk. And the interaction with the path and the, like, the water and just like everything else, all the buildings, um, it's just so interesting to look at. Uh, so that's why I wanted to make it in this way. Now, I don't know if all of this is going to stay in the same sort of layout, but this is just the way that we have it for now, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But today, we're not really doing much with that layout because it was kind of boring. It took a very long time for me to figure out exactly what I wanted to do, and we're not going to show that. What we are going to show today, though, is me building the new coaster station. Yes, and as you can see, I've already put in the roof, but that's like not how it ends up. I know it looks kind of like bland right now, and uh, it's definitely going to be very spicy towards the end. Uh, and the reason for that is... I did a very unique version of stacking the layers in this by I I kind of wanted to get the feel for how I wanted the roof to look right so I did the very basic shapes to create like a, just the shape of of uh, sorry not the basic shapes but the basic roof pieces just to get a feel for like what I wanted it to look like and then on top of that I am going to be creating a custom wooden corbel roof pieces all together to make um, them basically all fit together and match this dome that we're making and I made the dome mostly because I just really like making domes in this game but also I wanted it to be a really interesting piece um, of of the actual street itself as you can tell the canal almost curves a little bit and when you're coming down the street this is the focal point of that curve so when you see the canal end and curve off all you see is this big dome structure and the coaster station. Um, so I think it was really unique and I thought it was like a really good use of all well, that turn in the canal that I wanted to have so badly. So one of the things you're not going to see me do in this episode is a lot of cleaning up and background stuff. Um, I make this a full dome structure so I copy it around 360 degrees and the reason why that's a bad thing is because it's not the entire building, right? It's not sitting by itself or sitting on top of the coaster station. So it inter, it inter, or it, it overlaps the entire coaster station. So I eventually have to go back in and delete all the things that interact with places I don't want it to be interacting with. Um, so yeah, that took a very long time. Uh, pretty, uh, not really the best stuff to put on the video. So it's not on it. Um, in this style, uh, these these very vibrant colors was something I was definitely going for, um, and I think I'm going to have not necessarily this color scheme, but these colors used um, on the roofs and on the actual uh, other buildings of the main street as well. And the reason for that um, is because if you don't know this, uh, the way Disney does their main streets is everything just looks so perfect, right? And one of the reasons for that is because 
they use the same color schemes in different buildings, but using it as different colors. So let's back up and di digest that a little bit more. So what I mean by that is, so this building has a white, has like a white sort of uh, walls with these red accents. But if I was going to build another building, maybe I'll have a dark red wall with white accents. Now that's that's a little too similar for my taste, but you get the idea. Um, that similarity in kind of the color schemes is really what ties things together, and that's something I'm definitely planning on doing um, in in this series at least. Um, so you can look forward to seeing that. Um, I actually go ahead and change the color of the roller coaster as well, the coaster tracks, to a more deeper red maroonish color rather than this this uh, very dark purple. Um, I just I just think it overall it just looked better. So you can see me now. This is what I was talking about before, creating all of these wooden core bells, core bells. I think it's core bells, and uh, offsetting them, uh, kind of changing all the colors in different ways. Uh, and then creating this kind of tile set, whereas I don't have to like literally do a custom roof for the entire roof of this thing. That would be just crazy. So instead, I did this sort of uh, technique, I guess you can say. Um, very unique uh, stacking layer technique that I, re I recommend you all try because it came out really good. And that's a good and bad thing. And here's why. I kind of never want to make a not custom roof again. And that's really, really bad because this, I think the total pieces in this roof in this dome, I think there's like 8,000 pieces or something like that. Uh, okay, no, it's gotta be like 4,000. I, I think it's 4,000 in the dome and then 2,000 or 3,000 in the actual roof of the coaster station itself, the more boxier uh, piece of it. So yeah. This is not something I can do in a place like Sierra Wood Valley just because it would literally crash my game even more so than it already has. Um, and I was working in Cedar Wood Valley uh, recently and I was cr crashing quite frequently and that was like, uh, it was pretty heartbreaking really. Uh, I, I just want to make it like so detailed, um, but I just, I'm running into these these issues with um, this, the speeds or not the speeds but the actual frame rates and then eventually dropping stuff and then losing my content that I've cr like made for like many, many hours. Um, so that's like a very sad thing and it's happened way too much. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this particular building. Um, but I wanted to talk a little about the new update that's coming out and specifically this adventure pack. And a lot of people are very excited for it. Um, I'm also excited for it. I think the spooky pack was an unbelievably good update for this game and I'm also gonna buy this adventure pack very quickly for the new textures um, the new building pieces and like all these the little things that I can just you know create new things out of um, and I know I do use a lot of the same pieces sometimes but I also do like to experiment with pieces a lot off camera to see like what what can I build with this kind of stuff right um, and the more pieces we get the less limitations we have in the game so I am fully into this whole DLC thing um, and a lot of people are like, why do they like, have to pay for it? Um, I have a very different feeling about that. And the reason why is because if you like what Frontier does, right? If you think that they are supporting this game in a good way and they're changing things in a good way, I want to support them for that, right? I don't, I don't want them to do all of these, like, like, yes, it'd be great to have these things for free for everybody. Um, but they just do it in such a good way in such a, they have such a good, um, just viewpoint on it you know they're not being like malicious trying to charge us for everything they actually want to put new things in the game because we're asking for them and then not only are they putting in these new things that you pay for but there's also free things that come with this update being like um, improvements just to the game overall um, not necessarily new pieces but things that are actually going to improve the game um, so as long as they're doing that I really have no problem with supporting them with like was like 15 10 I think it's ten dollars I think it's 9.99 um, maybe like 7.99 euro and then like who knows what Canadian I don't know but regardless uh, I have no problem with that um, so that's just my viewpoint behind that and other things about it uh, it is very very um, nuancy in terms of what actually these pieces are what do I mean that so what I mean by that is that this is like an Indiana Jones update right and if I'm not building an Indiana Jones theme park or thinking about building one it limits me a little bit but like I said before, you can still use those pieces in any way you want. You don't have to make these these things into actual like 
adventure pieces, right? You can use them in different ways. Same thing with the spooky pack. And that's why I'm so excited for it. So, the rides that are coming in this update uh, are actually pretty great to an extent. I think the boat ride is going to be so good. I'm going to flash a picture of it now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But this looks so good, right? You can see the track through the water. And this it's just going to... It's going to open up so many possibilities to make things um, th that are just different than they were before. And one of the things that I'm kind of excited for about it is you can't see the station in that picture, but I really want the station to be like underwater. Or not underwater, but in the water rather than out of the water. I think that would be super, super cool. Um, and I, I just think it would be great for water rides. And one of the other ones I wanted to talk about was the mine train. And the mine train that's going to be added is going to be the one that is the Seven Dwarves mine train um, from Disney. And I'm showing you a picture of it now. And while it's very cool, I'll never be able to use it. Like, that's fine. But I like it because of it. it's just so unique the way that it swings around and stuff like that. If you haven't watched a POV of that, uh, you really should. It is an, a fantastic ride. Uh, and I'm very glad that, uh, that Frontier is implementing it into the game. Some other things I'm excited for are new foliage. I love new foliage. And you'll see at the end of this video what I mean by loving new foliage. Yes, I basically made this a very fall-themed area. Um, I think it's going to go really well with the theme of Fenrir. And it just... It looks different, right? It looks not like a lot of what a lot of other pe people are building. Or at least so I've seen. Um, so I'm going to keep going with that type of theme, this autumn theme in, um, in Fenrir. Other things are like like a lot of different vines, there's like animatronic animals, which I'll probably not use, but I think they're very, very cool. And one of the big things are waterfalls. Yes, waterfalls. If you can see it here, that looks like it will be a new waterfall, and I am all for it. So this new update is something I am very, very excited for, and hopefully I'll implement some of those things into not only Fenrir, but into Cedarwood Valley as well. Uh, speaking of Cedarwood Valley, there should be an update coming out very soon with 404 Gaming and I. Um, we go through what he has updated slash changed in the park, and uh, there's a lot of changes, uh, and almost all of them are for the better, uh, and uh, he left some work for me to do, but that's no problem, um, because I think it's a challenge, and I just... I've never had a sort of like park that I bounce around back and forth, but I think it's like really interesting concept of you building off of what someone else has already built. Um, so yeah, look forward to that guys. Um, we're coming towards the end of this video, and like I said, there is so much I do off camera in this. This is not even going to be recognizable uh, when you come to the cinematics. Well, it's, it's going to be still pretty, pretty recognizable. Um, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and for those of you who are new here, welcome. Uh, and please, like, leave me comments, you know, I love talking with you guys in the comments because it's just this inter this interaction piece with the Planet Coast Coaster community is something I didn't experience before, uh, and it's just awesome. I really do like it, and you guys are the best, so thank you guys so much for watching and listening to me rant about these random things for so long. I hope you guys enjoy the cinematics, and I will see you guys next time in Fenrir.